This will be our last lesson centering on species counterpoint, now in four parts. Why stop with four? Well, with just two parts, achieving harmonic fullness can be difficult. As the number of parts increases, the harmony gets richer, but each part's room to maneuver is reduced. While some schools take the species approach up to five parts, our time will be better spent by moving away from the species into other kinds of counterpoint, always with the goal of applying these skills in musical composition. Once again, we'll enrich our harmonic vocabulary. Now the student can use all the seventh chords in a given key, as long as the seventh is melodically easy to sing and properly resolved. A note to the student, just because we're not spending an entire lesson on each species, as we did in two parts, does not mean the student needs to do less of them. A reasonable goal would be 15 to 20 examples of each species. That's the only way to attain real fluency in three and four part writing. Now our first example in first species. The cantus is in the soprano. Even more than in three parts, we'll often resort to spacings and doublings that we would not use in an elementary harmony exercise in four parts. In the latter, the goal is the simplest, smoothest possible part writing, whereas here we are focusing on creating interesting lines that fit well together. So for example, in measure two here, there is momentarily more than an octave between the alto and the tenor. In measure five, we have three F sharps and one A. The only restrictions on these doublings and spacings concern certain notes that should never be doubled. These are the active tones, notes which actively need to resolve, like the leading tone or the seventh in a seventh chord. Later, in chromatic situations, altered notes also fall into this category. Notice the 365 in measure 6. The seventh is in the alto part, it's approached by step and resolved correctly in measure 7. As usual, the peaks of the various lines don't coincide. The peak in the bass arrives twice, but this isn't a big problem. Since the texture is homogeneous, no one part stands out apart from the soprano, which is on top of the texture. If the bass line were in fifth species, for example, the repeated peak would be better avoided. Now a second species example. Here the cantus is in the tenor. As usual in second species, we aim for a good balance between stepwise motion and leaps. There should be more of the former. Apart from measure 8, this example is in natural minor. As we've already mentioned, modal harmony allows for more flexibility in the lines. As usual, the peaks of the lines are independent here. Notice the arrival of the lowest note in the bass at the end. It's quite prominent and makes the cadence more final. Try singing the bass line with the higher E instead. The result is less strongly conclusive. Here's a third species example, the cantus is in the alto. Again, the peaks of the lines don't coincide. Notice the seventh chords in measures two, four, and eight. Measure four is a six, seven, which arrives first in the four, three position, and then presents the root at the end of the bar. The seventh is in the alto, a cantus, and it's approached and left by step. The G in measure five is the resolution. The momentary voice crossing between bass and tenor on the last beat of measure eight is no great problem, since both the seventh G and the dominant harmony are immediately resolved correctly. If this happened on the first beat, it would be too prominent, however. And now a fourth species example, the cantus is in the bass.
the direct octave between outer parts in measure 6 is also not a problem, since the suspension is the listener's focus. Also, notice that measures 5 and 6 are the same chord. The basic problem with direct fifths and octaves is that the leap draws attention to a new harmony, but then it sounds bare. This doesn't really apply here. Measure 8 has a 5-4-3 for the cadence. That's about all you can do when the cantus ends stepwise. Now a fifth species example. The cantus is in the alto. Fifth species in four parts is not especially difficult. Notice how the potential parallel fifths in measure three and four, between the tenor and the bass, are avoided by placing the neighbor notes in different rhythmic positions. A descending scale in measure five and six draws attention to the line's lowest note, the E flat, creating a sort of inverted climax to the fifth species melody. The octave leap in measure eight helps to avoid parallels with the other parts in the cadence by keeping the whole bass around only one note, F. 7 the soprano also resolves smoothly. We looked at combined species in our previous lesson. While it's possible and useful to do them in four parts as well, the things which we learned in three parts stay pretty much the same. However, the simultaneous combination of all the first four species at the same time is a bit of a tour de force. Here's an example. If you want to really challenge, try one of these. This is a case where using seventh chords actually makes things easier since there are more notes to choose from in each line. Notice, for example, the 5 6 5 of 6 in measure 3, which resolves correctly in the next bar. Notice also the harmonic ambiguity of measure 7, which starts off as a 4 7 chord but then turns into a 2 6 in the second half of the bar. Something similar happens in measure 8, which begins as the diminished seventh and then turns into a 5 4 3. As in the three part combined species, the main goal here, apart from good singing lines, is harmonic richness. The fact that three of the voices are moving is a challenge, but it also makes possible many more solutions in the second half of the bar. Once again, the main goal of these exercises in species counterpoint was to achieve fluency. By doing many of them in two, three, and now in four parts, the student becomes at ease with the basic ways in which voices interact. Our next lesson will look at fifth species in more than one part, to make the transition out of the species approach into situations where all the voices are moving at the same time. Remember, quantity counts. You won't become fluent in counterpoint unless you do 15 to 20 exercises of each kind. All the diatonic seventh chords are now available for use as long as the seventh is easy to sing and properly resolved. Any note in the chord can be doubled except for active tones. Sing and play. <laughs>